Hello everybody and welcome to Reads Read, Spider-Man Crawl Space Edition. Please check us out at the SpiderManCrawlspace.com. So I'm here, I even got the wonderful Spider-Man tie on. Separated at birth, maybe. But anyhow, I'm here of course to talk about Ultimate Spider-Man number 200, the big anniversary issue. Technically it's issue 202 if you counted um, Ultimatum Requiem, which was uh, quite a few years ago, but we're not going to go into that story. So let's get into the pros, mind you. Uh, first of all, this is a very good story. I mean, it's basically just, you know, the celebration of Peter Parker's life. There's just fantastic character moments um, between Gank to Aunt May to Gwen Stacy. I mean, there's just some wonderful character moments. I mean, all the classic... Uh, artists that have actually worked on Ultimate Spider-Man over the last 14 years just really make this book shine. I mean, it's full of character. And this is actually the reason why I always liked Bendis' writing. I mean, he really nails all the parts here. I mean, as I said, the tacking heads, but in this case, it actually works really well with stories and everything. And I actually really enjoyed that. I mean, it was a good story. I mean, I just love them remembering Peter Parker and the moments from, you know, Kong showing back up and seeing Kitty Pride to J. Jonah Jameson just sitting outside but watching from afar. But and Tony Stark, you know, unable to come, so throws a little money on it and everything else to try to make up for everybody there. But it, it's a very powerful story, and it really works good, even for four ninety nine or you know five bucks or five twenty six, depending on what your taxes are and everything else. But it's a great story. I don't really have any many cons. The only con is, of course, the ending. I think the last panel there where it shows what is possibly Peter Parker but is most likely the clone, the Scorpion clone or another one else, it's not depicted very well. We just don't know. We just see the back and some people thought it might have been a woman watching them but it's a little a little weird and of course we're going to find out more in you know the Ultimate Spider, Miles Morales, the Ultimate Spider-Man number one next month so we'll do that. That's the only thing that really is the only con I can really find about that issue so I'm going to give it actually a solid A. That's it. Just a little away from an A plus just because of that. And uh, just before we go I'm going to actually talk about Ultimate Spider-Man. I mean I was finishing up my uh, undergraduate in college when Ultimate Spider-Man started in 2000 and I thought it was really an interesting take on the original Spider-Man and where it went to the story and everything else. I mean, all the classics were there. But, you know, I do remember, even though I, did, I didn't really pick up, except for the first four issues of the book and everything, but, you know, reading at the bookstore like Borders or the comic shop and just reading and reading all these, you know, issues over the next decade and everything else. And I really enjoyed the stories. And I ended up getting the whole collections and the trade paperbacks as time went on and everything else. So I always enjoyed and always had a special place for Ultimate Spider-Man. And the last couple of years, especially the death of Peter Parker... It worked really well because it really went off and established Miles Morales as really interesting and everything else. And actually, I mean, I've jumped back on officially as a reader of Ultimate Spider-Man starting here with issue 200. I'm ready to go with Miles next month and everything. I'm still waiting on the other Ultimate books because I've never been hugely into the Ultimate Universe. Spider-Man's the only one that's ever stuck out to me. But especially now here with Miles, I'm pretty much on board as a main reader now. So I always find it really was something special with Ultimate Spider-Man that always rang true out of all the crazy co crossovers, giant mega events from, you know, the Ultimatum Wave to the death of the X-Men to, you know, Galactus now. But it worked pretty well, and I'm really enjoying it. And I, I think Miles is, you know, is great as Peter Parker's successor. And that's actually one of the best parts I really love in the story where he actually talks about Spider-Man, which is getting a sequel here sometime in the next year. But how he says, you know, him and Peter probably would have been best of friends. And I really like that about the story. So give an, an A here for this. And on that note, everybody, I am out of here. I will see everybody for my review of the final issue of Superior Spider-Man in a couple weeks. I will see you then. Catch you later.